Hello, my name is Jeff Freed. At Intersystems, I'm responsible for our platform strategy, and I also run our Innovation Acceleration Initiative. I've learned that many of our customers have started referring to me as Professor Iris, um, and so I'll, I'll use those professor skills a little bit in taking you through a topic of AI-ready data. Now, Gartner did a broad survey this past winter, and in general, looking at the topics of AI-ready security, AI-ready principles, and AI-ready data. When it comes to AI-ready data, they found that only 4% of the organizations they surveyed felt their data was ready for AI. Now, 55% felt like this was a daunting challenge to get their data ready. A few of the rest felt like they were in the right position, but most of the rest really didn't know what AI-ready data meant. So from both Gartner's position and uh, my experience, there's five main characteristics of AI-ready data. It, it, and I'll, I'll go through them, but AI-ready data should be governed, secure, fair, enriched, and accurate. Now, to elaborate on that a little bit, when I say data is governed, it really means you know what you're feeding to AI. Because AI is all about the data. If you don't have good data by some definition, then you won't have good AI. So knowing what you're feeding to AI also means that you have some ability to catalog what data you have. To audit who's accessed that data, why, whether you've had uh, data leakage, etc., and really to control what data goes into AI and what does not. So this is part of an overall IT governance strategy typically, but it's particular to AI because AI is really all driven by data. Now, security is often part of governance. I list it separately here, both because security and privacy is a particular interest when it comes to AI, but also because controlling access to data is essential. Now, I was involved in a project last year with a customer that had an IT group and a data science group. And the da data science group wanted to do some feature engineering in order to do predictive AI, and they kept asking IT for the data. They were like, just give us all the data, extracts, we'll then figure out what we want, what we do with it. And the IT group kept going, no way. This is patient data, it's full of PHI, of, of private health information. And if it leaked out of the organization, that would be a huge problem. We're not giving you the data. And this impasse went on for two years with the data scientists saying, just give me the data, and IT saying, no way. They resolved it by having a platform in which access controls and security determined what the data scientists could do. They could use the data, they could bring their tools to do analysis, to do feature engineering, to build predictive models but they couldn't extract it. 
So that's a key part of access, of being able to not just audit who has access, but control it. The flip side is that data in many organizations is spread out in lots of silos, and data being secure is also means that it's accessible. And you may decide that you simply need to connect to data, or collect the data. Some forms of data you don't want to be brought into a data science environment or in the cloud. It lives in particular systems and perhaps you only need to connect to it and then the security concerns are about the data on the wire, not and data in motion rather than data at rest. Or you may discover that you need to use that data in a continual pattern. You need to have all of it rest in, in order to have um, performance of these AI algorithms. For Gen AI versus tabular AI, there are distinctions here. Because for Gen AI, often it's a matter of crawling, chunking, and vectorizing. So that's security and access, flip sides of the same kind of pattern. The third topic about what does it mean to have data that is fair, we really can't talk about that without assessing bias. Um, just like all data is dirty, all perspectives are biased. And I won't advise people to get, become free of bias. It's about understanding your bias and trying to minimize it. So. One technique for minimizing bias as often described as having wide data, not necessarily big data. And that sounds like a lot of jargon, but essentially, if you're able to not only have the data, but the context around the data, make it broader, and you can understand that uh, this data came from a particular, about people came from a particular economic class. You can understand that uh, sort of class bias in the data or racial bias, etc. So having enough width in data to be able to even analyze whether it's biased or not, that's really key. The other aspect here is to have data and AI systems that are grounded. That means that there are some elements of the data that you trust and you view as fair that you can use to triangulate other data. So that's the fair part. How about the enriched part? Um, there's a lot we could say here around Techniques like deduplicating the data, tagging it, extending it, joining it with other data. You'll hear people talk a lot about cleaning data, which is a variety of techniques. Again, that's different for tabular AI and generative AI. And I think the point that I really want to emphasize here is that this is not all your data. It's not necessary to have a data cleanup exercise for all of the data in your enterprise to have good value out of Gen AI. And that's important because that, you know, data cleansing, data quality is a continual and sometimes very big task. So cleaning uh, the data, processing the data, enriching the data 
is something you can do in the context of the use cases you're after in either tabular or generative AI. And that brings us to accurate data. Well, you know, what does that mean? I, I think it, it means that the data is real and represents the reality. So what's uh, an example? Um, I did a project a couple years ago that involved survey data from a form. And we were looking at the population data. It was remarkable that something like 17% of the respondents for the survey came from Afghanistan. And I just couldn't understand how so many people from Afghanistan had entered the survey. Well, really it was because Afghanistan was the first country in the drop-down list. And people, as they entered the data, in a hurry just picked Afghanistan as their, their residence. Uh, same thing, often if you have a, a numeric form, people will enter 111, 11111, just to get the data entry out of their way. And that's a, a simple cleaning technique that helps you get real data. Accurate data should also be fit for the use case comes back to having a set of use cases that you're aiming at and you can assess subjectively whether the data fits that or not. So along with use cases, a, a technique I really like is to think about this as domains. Um, and I'll give you an example from just two months ago. I was talking with an airline that had made a generative AI system for uh, traveler support. I'm, I'm stuck and I want to see about re uh, rebooking my flight or uh, what's the status of this or where do I go in the terminal. Um, and the data they had had good information about routes, times, up-to-date information about the... Uh, the flight status, but didn't really have pricing information. So naturally, people would ask not just, is there a flight available, but what's it going to cost me? And their initial system made some mistakes and actually misrepresented the price, a form of hallucination, if you will, until they established that the domain of this was only for information and not pricing. So that domain is really important in terms of guardrails. Uh, the way I often put this is, if you build a generative AI dialogue system, a test case should be ask it, how do I build a bomb? And the system should not answer that question. Uh, so those guardrails become especially important as you get into production with a generative AI system. And having data identified as good for one domain and not others helps build those guardrails. So as you look at these five different attributes of Gen AI or AI-ready data, I, I really like the data fabric architectural pattern. And there's a lot of material from inner systems about this pattern, um, but it definitely ties into governance, common governance, whether your data is collected or connected, wherever it lies, and governance that helps you with cataloging and auditing. It certainly helps with the security part, it certainly helps with the enrichment, the data transformation, deduplication, normalization, et cetera. The use of domains is a form of enrichment. And the use of data analysis to establish an assessed level of bias and counteract it is also there. 
So I, I like the data fabric pattern as a way to help create AI-ready data. Now, if you're looking for where do I get started, um, there isn't a, a ironclad recipe for this, but I'd recommend a few things. I would recommend cataloging the data you have. Understand what the data sources are, where, where they are, sort of what domains and domain modeling you might have. I think it's important to understand what kind of use cases and how those use cases fit some kind of domain model. Um, and then looking at the access. How do you want to get at the data? And how do you want to, for example, for Gen AI in a RAG pattern, um, particular data, you have to decide how it's going to be chunked. Are you going to take large bodies of text and do it paragraph by paragraph or sentence by sentence? You're going to take structured data and join it to make it wide before you vectorize it, for example. So those are three things that you can do to get started with the data you have. Start with a cataloging, look at your domains and the set of use cases, and then look at how you might provide access, whether you need to move data or whether you can simply connect to it. So. Don't be scared about your data not being AI ready. Just look at these attributes, fit them into your overall program with these starting things, and remember that you don't have to process all of your data. It doesn't have to be crystal clear, clean, but it does need to be under control. So I hope you found this useful, that it helps you feel perhaps less overwhelmed about getting your data AI ready. And um, I am excited about your journey to learn about Gen AI and, and explore more material we have on how to use Gen AI effectively and fairly.